So maybe you don't have an iPhone or any Apple products for that matter, but if you do care about privacy and security, it is worth learning about what technologies are out there and how they are being implemented. Apple has a large user base, so this technology will likely impact someone you know or care about. The technical overview that I'll be referencing today from Apple clearly states that iCloud Private Relay is different from a standard VPN provider, but as you'll notice, there are a lot of similarities. There is one key difference that I will be describing a bit later. So instead of just telling you what the service is, I thought I would show you. To do that, I first need a web server so that we have access to the web logs. So I started off by spinning up a Debian server instance on DigitalOcean. After that, I SSH'd into the server, installed Apache web server. Then I installed CertBot, which lets you request a Let's Encrypt SSL certificate. Once that was validated, I made some additional web server customizations that you'll see a little bit later in the video, and we were good to go. So now that we have the setup, this is what a request looks like not using iCloud Private Relay, which I'll refer to as Private Relay from here forward. So on the left side here, I have a Chromium browser window. This window up here, this is just tailing the web log file, and down here is just a terminal. So up here, if we take a look, this is ifconfig.io. I can see my current external IP address is 185.209. This is not my actual home IP address. Country code is DE for Germany, I'm not actually in Germany. If we do a who is on this IP, we can see who this belongs to, the AS. So now if we go to the demo site in the browser, we can see the logs on the right side on the web server. We have the 185.209, which corresponds to my home IP address. Now if I enable private relay, which currently supports the Safari browser and any unencrypted web requests. So I'm going to bring up a Safari window. And now if we make a request to the same site, We can see our source IP is now a 104.28, if we check out who that belongs to. This one belongs to Cloudflare. So as I mentioned, Private Relay is only supported in the Safari browser and unsecured web requests, which I'll expand on a little bit more later. So that was a basic example, and I'll be doing another one a bit later that's more in depth, but for now let's talk about exactly what's going on here. So this image is from the technical overview that Apple published. We have the device, which in this example is my Mac Mini. We have the access network, which is the network you're connected to. In this case, it's my home network. Now this is where private relay starts. We have Relay1, also referred to as the ingress proxy. The software for Relay1 is operated by Apple in locations across the world. Now according to the documentation, the only thing Relay1 can see is the original source IP address the request came from. The actual website that we requested is encrypted and not visible to Relay1. To put this into an analogy, if we were sending a letter, we have the to address, which is in the center of the envelope, and we have the return address, which is in the upper left-hand corner of the envelope. Relay1 that handles our letter would only be able to see the return address in the upper left-hand corner, and that to address in the center of the envelope would be encrypted and not visible to Relay1. The only job of Relay1 is to take that original source IP and convert it to a geohash. A geohash encodes a geographic location into a short string of letters and digits. There's a lot more that go into geohashes, but for this video all we need are the basics. So for the geohash example, we're going to take my source IP address, and then we're going to be using a service called MaxMind, which is a GeoIP database. So we can now see the location data tied to this IP address. For my English viewers, this is located in Frankfurt on the Main. For the German viewers out there, Frankfurt on Main. I tried. So we take the approximate coordinates, the latitude and longitude, paste them in this geohash converter, and we can now see the geohash specific to this latitude and longitude. Now the longer the geohash, the more precise the location. According to the documentation from Apple, they are truncating the geohash to four characters in length, which represents an area of approximately 800 square kilometers. The reason they're shortening the geohash is for added privacy. So instead of Relay1 just forwarding your source IP address, which is unique to you in most cases, Relay1 is going to forward this geohash to Relay2, so all that Relay2 knows is approximately where you're located. Exactly what happens next will vary depending on what the user selected in the private relay configuration. When you turn on private relay, there's a setting for maintain general location or use country and time zone. If the first option, maintain general location, is selected, then Relay1 will send that computed geohash to Relay2, so that Relay2 can then select a relay IP in your general location that corresponds to that four character geohash. If use country and time zone is selected, then that geohash computed by Relay1 is not sent to Relay2. Relay2 will then select a relay IP from a much larger region, as described by the name of the option. 
which will be a location from your country and time zone. They don't specify exactly what data is sent and placed at the geohash, but we can infer from the name of the option that it is a combination of your country and time zone. So while Relay2 can't see the original source IP on the request, Relay2 can see the requested website. So at this point, Relay2 assigns a Relay IP to you depending on which option you selected. It then forwards this request onto the destination web server. When that server receives that request, it will appear that it came from a Relay IP and not from your home IP address. One important distinction to note is that Relay2 is owned and operated by a completely separate organization other than Apple. I checked the Whois data on a few of the IP addresses in the Relay IP list provided by Apple, and some of those providers include Akamai, Fastly, and Cloudflare. So now back to the letter analogy. Relay1 does not know the destination address. All it has is that return address or the source IP address on the request. Relay1 converts that return address to either a geohash or to a country time zone pair and then forwards it on to Relay2. Relay2 is able to see the destination address on the envelope or the original website that was requested, but it doesn't have any knowledge of the original return address that was on the envelope or your original source IP address. All it sees is that geohash or time zone country pair, it selects a new return address or a relay IP, overwrites that, and then forwards on the request to the destination web server. This is where private relay differs from a traditional VPN provider. They have this sort of double blind setup between the two relays so that no single corporation knows all the details about the original request. So now that we have a conceptual overview of private relay, let's do a more in-depth test to see if it functions exactly as they say. So according to the documentation, all requests made through the Safari browser will be routed through private relay, along with all unencrypted internet traffic. The first part of that statement is pretty easy to understand, so let's test that out first. So if we hop on over to Safari, we go to HTTP, demo site, we can see not secure, which means HTTP, and the source IP address belongs to Cloudflare, which is not my home IP, which is the 185. Also to show, if we go to HTTPS, again, that's also the 104, which belongs to Cloudflare, not my home IP address. Now to test the next part, it's going to take a little bit more effort. So if we go to Chromium, we go to the demo site. I think that was cached, so we'll just refresh it. We can see the source IP when using HTTPS is 185.209, and that is my home IP address. Now if we run the same request in Chromium using HTTP, that was cached again, going to refresh. We can see that the IP address now is a 104.28. If we check who that belongs to, again, Cloudflare, and just to prove that is not my source IP address. So this HTTP request made through Chromium did in fact use Private Relay. But that still doesn't answer the question if Private Relay is looking at all port 80 traffic, which is HTTP by default, or if it's somehow looking at all unencrypted web requests on our system and then proxying those. So I came up with two ways to validate that. The first is I set up my web server to also listen on port 81. So if we specify port 81 in our browser and we're making this an HTTP request, press enter. We can see over port 81, we can see in the logs colon 81. The source IP was 185.209, which again is my home IP address. So what this shows us is that Private Relay is port-based and they're not looking for any unsecured web request on the system. So the last thing I wanna validate now that we know it's port-based on port 80 is are they proxying all traffic on port 80 or only web requests? So to test that, we can't use a browser. I'm gonna start a TCP dump, which will show us all the packets incoming on the web server. So this command is just gonna look at all port 80 traffic on that specific interface. We're going to run that. Now on the bottom window here, which is on my Mac, I'm gonna use Netcat to make a connection to port 80, which all it does is perform the three-way handshake and there's no actual web request being sent. So if I do that, can't type. Now on this TCP dump, there's no actual web request. This is just a three-way handshake. And we can see the source IP on here is the 104.28.39. If we check that one, it's obviously not my IP address, which is the 185. And again, we can see this one belongs to Cloudflare. So this confirms that Private Relay is intercepting all traffic on port 80, not just web requests made through your browser. So anything going over port 80 will then use Private Relay, regardless of what it is.
So now after reading about this and testing it out, how do I feel about it? Am I going to use it? Absolutely not. But I do think some less techie users might benefit from this, especially if they're on an unsecured public network or even on their home network. I've also talked with some subscribers who told me their reasoning why they don't use a VPN service on their home network, but those subscribers weren't based in the United States, so I can understand why they might trust their local ISP a bit more. I personally trust a random VPN company on the internet more than I trust my local ISP. If you do some quick searching around, you can find some sketchy behavior of some of these groups in the US. So while I like the technology behind the fact they're splitting up the sensitive data between two different organizations, I don't like the fact that I'll be tunneling all of my traffic through Apple. It goes against everything I've been trying to avoid. I read the entire technical overview a few times, and while it paints the picture they're giving us a look inside the box, really all they are doing is telling us what we should believe is going on inside the box. There's no way to validate any of the privacy enhancements they claim, except for obfuscating the source IP address, as far as I know. My tests also raise another question, which is what happens to that unencrypted HTTP request when it uses private relay? According to the documentation, Relay1 cannot see the website because it's encrypted, but in this case it's not. Maybe it's encrypted locally by private relay before being sent off to Relay1 where it's unable to decrypt it, but again there's no way to validate this. And then lastly they do mention logging in the technical overview. They say the proxy logs do not contain enough information to connect a user's IP or account with their browsing activity. I'm just going to post the screenshot here for you to read, but it doesn't give me a ton of confidence. More transparency and a way to demonstrate the protections they're claiming would be a great addition to the service. But I would personally recommend a random VPN provider over this service if you're looking for some sort of protection, especially if you live in the United States.